911. What's the address of the emergency? Um, I think we're on uh, 75. How many people are hurt, do you know? safety standards, uh, purity standards for water, uh, standards for uh, the use of pesticides. They would not have passed if it hadn't been for Ralph Nader. But his real legacy is about changing the way in which Americans think about the right to be safe from dangerous products. The simple knowledge that there's somebody to point to when someone tells you you can't uh, fight City Hall, when someone says that money is so powerful, that politicians are so corrupt, there's nothing that one citizen can do, and you can just say, hey, would you forget Ralph Nader? In 1965, 50,000 people died in car accidents on U.S. roadways. Although safety equipment such as seat belts existed, the majority of American car manufacturers chose not to include them because of the additional costs. Car manufacturers had no interest in, in developing cars that protected the people inside. There were many people concerned with the lack of safety standards in the auto industry. However, these concerns were not brought to national attention until 1965, when the book Unsafe at Any Speed was written by a young lawyer named Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader was born in the small town of Winstead, Connecticut, where he would be taught many of the values that would guide him throughout the rest of his career. Ralph's experience in Winstead, Connecticut, uh, really, really shaped him. His father ran a restaurant uh, where he listened to people talk politics. His family brought the kids around the dinner table and really, really uh, insisted that they pay attention to the world about them in every way. I first became interested in auto safety because I hitchhiked a lot. And when you're picked up by truckers, sometimes you get to the scene of a horrible crash before the police and emergency personnel get there. And it is really a terrible, grisly uh, scene. It got me interested in more crash-worthy cars, which means you know, seat belts today, airbags, padded dash, all the things that can make you escape serious injury, even if you are in a crash. And I did a paper at Harvard Law School which I turned into uh, the book Unsafe and in Speed. New York lawyer Ralph Nader, a legal advisor to the United States Senate Inquiry, has just published a book called Unsafe at Any Speed. In an interview with Warner Troyer, Nader documents his charges that the car makers fail to build safety into their products. Let's start with the Corvair. You say that the Corvair for three or four years yes. was an unsafe vehicle to drive. Uh, isn't that a pretty wild exaggeration? No, I think uh, the Corvair had a rear axle, which under certain predictable conditions of driving, the car would suddenly and unexpectedly go out of control. He took that single car, the Corvair, and he made it a symbol of what was wrong with the industry in general. As his book rose up the bestsellers list, Automakers began seeing Nader as a serious threat. General Motors hired an investigator to try and get some dirt on him, whatever it was. Uh, and uh, there was a big congressional hearing about it because Ralph figured out that they were doing that. And a thousand people came, biggest room in the United States Senate. And the president of General Motors had to apologize to Ralph. I want to apologize here and now to the members of this subcommittee and Mr. Nader. I sincerely hope that these apologies will be accepted. Only five months later, President Johnson signed the National Highway Safety Act, which required that seatbelts be placed in all American cars. However, this was not the end of GM's troubles. Later that year, Nader filed an invasion of privacy lawsuit against them, which resulted in a $600,000 settlement, which Nader would use to find consumer advocacy networks across the country. I didn't think being a Lone Ranger was enough. We had to have a lot of people working in uh, fighting for justice, fighting health, safety, environmental improvements, uh, the kind of silent violence that corporations wreck on people. Uh, and so I started a lot of groups. Ralph Nader played a crucial role in forming the first PIRGs, 
In 1970, he toured college campuses and spoke about the idea of students forming their own organization to advocate for change in policy at the local, state, and federal level. Following his speaking tour, Ralph Nader and Donald Ross co-authored and published a book called Action for a Change, which provided the blueprint for how to start PERG chapters on campuses across the country. In addition to local PERGs, Nader would help to found groups such as Public Citizen, the Auto Safety Center, and the Center for Responsive Law. Throughout the 60s and 70s, Nader would lead these groups to fight for some of the most important consumer protection legislation in our nation's history. One of the things that he has led a charge for is the strengthening of groups that actually do act as these watchdogs, that hold people accountable for what they say and for what they do, for the, the chemicals that they put in the water or the air, um, for the products that they, that they create. And that, that sense of public accountability is really, really important. To me, the biggest lesson from Ralph Nader is never underestimate the power that an individual can have in bringing together a group of people to fight for something. His work has come with its fair share of controversy. Throughout the years, Nader has been involved in some highly publicized fights with former friends and allies. You know, there's a saying that says, let's not let the perfect be the enemy of the good. I think Ralph forgot that sometimes, you know, and was so intent on everybody had to be exactly perfect under his standards that if they fell a little bit short or they had to, felt that they had to make some compromises, he was ready to attack them. He, for some reason, he freaks out and he can't stand it when people that he's worked with and mentored and who have admired him and learned so much from him uh, then get into official positions and are policy makers and in his view don't do everything exactly perfectly as he thinks it should be done. I, I would say that Mr. Nader, when he believes that he's right and it's an important public policy, he's going to say so. And uh, sometimes that means that he fights with friends. The peak of these disputes came in 2000 when Nader declared his candidacy for president. Many people who worked for him or were associated with him were aghast in 2000 when he decided to run as an independent uh, against Al Gore. Um, you know, and it was completely clear to so many people that you know, he wasn't going to win, he wasn't going to get a lot of votes, and if he got a, even a small number of votes, they were going to come from Al Gore and help George Bush win the presidency, and that's exactly what happened. Many people remember Ralph Nader only as the presidential spoiler, forgetting his work and accomplishments as a consumer advocate. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people, will never give him a positive rating uh, in terms of legacy because of 2000 and the election. Um, I think there's a lot of stuff that outweighs that. And I don't think that his bitter, nasty, uh, tirades against me or other people who worked with him or other public officials, uh, you know, cancels out the good stuff uh, that, than the people he's inspired. So I, w I would say his legacy is po has to be positive. An average consumer, they would, they would be need to be much more worried about the food that they eat, the water that they drink, the products that they buy, the automobiles that they ride in. So we owe him, a, I think all of us in the whole country uh, owes him an enormous debt of gratitude. He's made such an impact in so many different areas. I think the most important thing that Mr. Nader has done is he has been, uh, he's shown that one person can make a difference and that you can organize and bring a lot of other people along with you. It, he's probably the only example in American history of a single individual actually starting a major social change movement. If you look at the civil rights or abolitionist or women's or environmental movements, they all had many mothers and fathers. And one of the extraordinary things about the consumer movement is that it really was just this one guy, the typewriter. I think that it speaks to his legacy that on many of the issues and organizations that he initially began with in the early 70s, he did not remain directly involved with, but they nonetheless are active and uh, quite present in many state capitals today. Taken as a whole, there, there are very few people who, who, who 
living today who have had as much impact on the quality of life in the United States than Ralph Nader.